so here i come to some generalized descriptions of formalism of lattice dynamics the reason being that uh, regarding phonon experiments which i will get on to after a little while that uh, it is important for such experiments to carry out calculations or simulations before we take up the experiment reason being one that the inelastic neutron scattering or the phonon intensities are much smaller than the bragg peak intensity so it's a low intensity experiments possibly two orders of magnitude lower the phonon intensities and that's why to have a successful experiment it is necessary that we carry out the lattice dynamical calculations for the sample before and especially if it is a single crystal sample which is easy to tackle theoretically but the fact remains that it is not so easy to get single crystals but for the single crystal samples it is easy to understand uh, and we need to carry out detailed lattice dynamical calculations regarding the phonon dispersion curves and then and then only we take up the experiment that is the general trend unlike uh, let's say an extra diffraction experiment where one will make a sample by chemical route or by some other route and first thing they do will put it on extra diffraction instrument here before you take up lattice dynamics in experiments on an instrument it is important that we understand the phonons and how they behave in this single crystal sample so now i with this i start first let me just write down there is something called a dynamical matrix i'll get into the interesting part called dynamical matrix first positions of atoms here the formalism is the or the protocol is that i am writing x when i say the kth atom in the lth unit cell that means there are unit cells after unit cells in the solid there are unit cells and i am talking about the kth atom in the lth unit cell if there are n atoms atoms per unit cell so if there are n can be 2 can be 3 so then the kth atom in the lth unit cell is given by its equilibrium position r l k that means k the l unit cell k atom in the unit cell plus a displacement vector u l k the u l k is the displacement vector of the k atom in the l unit cell and primitive cell there are number of primitive not primitive cell i say unit cells unit cells l equal to 1 to n and this displacement is about its equilibrium position at the lth unit cell for the kth atom now earlier also you saw that i took solutions which are wave like here also only the writing is slightly different let me just uh, if you see a traveling wave solution is given by e to the power i omega t in time e to the power minus i k dot r in space and this k is the wavelength of the spatial spatial uh, variation omega is the temporal variation and this is the traveling wave solution now with this much understanding you see here so the alpha is x y z x y z components that is given by one is that e to the power i q dot r just now i wrote i k dot r it's e to the power i q dot r r is a equilibrium position of k atom in the lth cell u alpha k q is that when the this is the x component of the k atom for the phonon of wave vector q this is for total displacement u x 
or u y or u z for the kth atom in the LH cell. This is coming the from the phonon of wavelength Q, and then I have earlier also I wrote e to the power i k dot. I wrote e to the power i k a. If you see this, let me just show you this this solution. Let me just go back to the solution here. You see, this is the displacement. Here I am writing this displacement. This was the displacement. This is the traveling wave, and this is the traveling wave solution with a prefactor. Here I have written the same. In a slightly more generalized platform, I have chosen phonons. So the this is the phonon wave vector. For the phonon wave vector Q, this is the kth atom in the unit cell. Its displacement in one direction alpha can be x, y, z. Then this is given by a traveling wave solution. Which was e to the power i k s plus a uh, uh, p plus a into a. Here it is q dot r, which is the equilibrium wave vector and the temporal variation. So this is the displacement vector. Now in this formalism also, I will go for the solution for the equation of motion. For example, here I have written it that. Uh, this is what I wrote just now. So now the equation of motion again, e to the power i omega t gives m k because m k is the mass m k mass of k atom omega square q. Here earlier I just wrote omega square. Now it is omega. As a function of q, because depending on the phonon wave vector, omega will be different. So omega square as a function of q into the displacement vector. So the displacement vector earlier it was u. Now I am writing u as u x u y u z alpha going from alpha going from alpha is x y z components of the displacement this is summed over a matrix d alpha beta that means it can be d x y d d x x d x y d x z d y y d d so d alpha beta will be d x x d x y d x z sorry that i am sometimes Talking too fast. D Y Z D Y Y D X Y D Y Y D Y Z and then similarly D X Z D Y Z D Z Z. So this is so this is the dynamical matrix. I will tell you what the dynamical matrix shortly. For the interaction between kth atom and the k prime atoms, for a phonon wave vector of Q, and then this is the U beta component. So that means the alpha component or the x component. If I say x, this depends on X Y Z displacement and the corresponding dynamical matrix here, d alpha beta. That means if it is Y, then it will be d x Y, which depends on the phonon wave vector and the interaction between k and k k prime atoms. So the dynamical matrix which dictates the force. Because if you remember in the earlier examples which I used the simpler examples, I used the force constant which was C. Now The same I have replaced with a more generalized and mathematically more compact expression. So this is the force constant. So force constant means phi alpha beta. Basically, the direction 
एक्स वाई एक्स एक्स वाई जेड सो अल्फा बीटा विल डिक्टेट दैट द फोर्स फॉर बिटवीन के एटम इन द एल एच सेल एंड द के प्राइम एटम इन द एल प्राइम सेल सो दिस इज द टू एटम्स विच आर इंटरेक्टिंग दिज आर द डिरेक्शन डिपेंडेंट इंटरेक्शन एंड देन आई हैव यूज द ए टू दीपर आई क्यू डॉट आर माइनस आर सो दिस इज द equilibrium position of the kth atom in the lh cell at site i and this is the and this is the variable r and k prime atom at the l prime cell so this is the distance uh, if you remember i can write it as r minus r prime i am showing this indicators because this is the distance between the k prime atom in the l prime cell and the k atom in the lh cell so when i again write it down as a determinant of coefficient then i have this determinant so this is the dynamical matrix which basically defines the force between two atoms at two different unit cells with a traveling wave like solution because the displacements have a traveling wave like solution so the displacement are connected Through the force constants, and then I get a determinant, which is the determinant of the coefficient. This part is understandable, and this part, which is the force part, is d alpha beta q, means the Fourier wave vector q and k and k prime atom. So the for the Fourier wave vector q, the interaction between k and k prime atom. is given by d alpha beta in terms of the force constant and this is the m omega square q and delta k k prime delta alpha beta prime alpha beta because the k th and k prime the diagonal terms will have this terms equal to 1 non diagonal terms will be zero so now the solutions so the we are trying to solve this equation and actually this force constants we know or we have to know if we have to do a phonon calculation then the force constants the force constants needs to be known should be known because then only we can do a phonon calculation so we can use various models for the force constants we can use a lenard jones potential lenard jones potential which is known to all of you or uh, if there are ionic solids then there will be ionic potential which you have to use so lenard jones ionic so we need to know the force constant between the atoms when it had to solve the dynamical matrix and find out the eigen values and the eigen vectors the eigen values eigen values are the omega omega j the set of eigen values and the eigen vectors i may call it xi j now there are very now when i say omega j that means the eigen vectors it is basically the energy associated with a particular phonon and for that the phonon xi j will give the displacement pattern dynamical matrix is a hermitian matrix we know because the forces are real dynamical matrix is hermitian so its solutions in terms of omega square should be real so omega j squares are real but real does not mean positive if omega j square is less than 0 or negative then you have e to the power minus i omega t and then this omega will be imaginary and you will have e to the power minus omega t so such a phonon you can see with time it decays so for imag for imaginary omega j the oscillations can't be sustained so for solution which are possible for phonons the phonons that are quantized oscillation of the atoms in a crystalline solid they should be greater than 
and the imaginary omega j's they will decay and they will not be able to sustain in the system now for n atoms in the unit cell we know that there are three n degrees of freedom and so there will be three n eigen values and three n eigen vectors so after diagonalizing the matrix we get the eigen values and the eigen vectors so what i am trying to do this is too much of mathematical expression basically since there are three n atoms in the unit cell uh, i am trying to find out three n number of independent harmonic oscillators we are familiar with the harmonic oscillators which has got solutions like this so here my attempt is these are coupled oscillators i will request you to look into coupled harmonic oscillators or coupled pendulums coupled pendulums on internet so several videos are available you can see how the coupled pendulums oscillate in space and time so here i have got 3n normal modes so my attempt is just like classical mechanics that we try to divide the oscillations in terms of independent oscillations and that's why we have got 3n normal modes and we also have 3n displacement patterns in terms of 3n eigen vectors i'll give an example for example suppose i have got first the first example that i showed you just one atom per unit cell then i have got three modes so now that means i have got x y z components of movement now if it's a longitudinal phonon or longitudinal acoustic phonon then this eigen vector will be 1 0 0 because if i consider it is propagating in the x direction propagation is in the x direction because other displacement zero and this x displacement is 1 there can be some constant term before or after but the eigen vector is 1 0 0 similarly for the transverse phonon the eigen vector will be 0 1 0 if i consider the plane is a yz plane so for one transverse mode the displacement is in the y direction and the for the other transverse mode the displacement in the z direction so for acoustic phonons with one atom per unit cell i have got these three displacement eigen vectors so this is the longitudinal one and this two are the transverse so for n number of atoms then i have got a wrong column which is x for first atom y for first atom z for first atom then x for the second atom y for the second atom z for the second atom finally if there n then x for the nth atom y for the nth atom z for the nth atom so i have a long column matrix so as an example if there are two matrices two i'm sorry two atoms if i have two atoms then for the longitudinal it will look like this 1 0 0 first atom 1 0 0 for the second atom so for two atoms this is 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 is a longitudinal one similarly for the two atoms for the acoustic mode it will be 0 0 0 sorry 0 1 0 0 then it will be 0 1 0 for two atoms for the longitudinal mode so now that's what i wrote just now that in general it is like this but for 
as I told that uh, for uh, one zero direction in the Brillouin zone, this is the longitudinal acoustic mode. This is the transverse acoustic mode. Now let us consider at q equal to zero a longitudinal optical phonon. In case of optical phonon, the atoms don't move in the same direction. I explained to you that uh, sorry. I explained to you that they move opposite to each other. So here you can see the eigenvector will be one. Sorry, eigenvector should be one zero zero. Then the second atom, if this atom is moving in the x direction, the other atom is longitudinal phonon. The other atom is moving in the opposite direction, minus one zero zero. So this is the displacement vector. So this gives you a sense that for a given number of atoms in a unit cell, how to write down the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues are omega j square q. That means the j branch for the q Brillouin zone value, q value of the momentum vector in the Brillouin zone. So now instead of deriving the entire scattering law, let me just give it to you and then explain the terms in it. So this is the scattering law. If you remember, earlier we had talked about scattering law in which we talked about e to the power minus i q dot r j 0 e to the power i q dot r j prime t in some leverage apart from other terms. So this is the space-time correlation function. That gives me here, this is a phonon structure factor. This is a number of phonons. And there are, apart from the constant, there are two delta functions. The first delta function, if you remember, when we did diffraction, because there is no energy transfer, we said that Q should be equal to G, a reciprocal width. Now, we not only have a Q which is a momentum transfer, Q is equal to 4 pi by lambda sin theta, but we also associate with a phonon wave vector and all of them have associated momentums with them and that tells me that in this case Q plus Q, so the momentum transfer the experiment at the depending on the angle at which you are measuring and the phonon wave vector phonon wave vector means when I plot my omega versus q this is the q acoustic mode optic mode this is the q this is the q these two together should be equal to some reciprocal wave vector and this is the conservation law for momentum and this is the conservation law for energy the neutron in the process of scattering either the neutron can gain energy or lose energy so neutrons neutron can gain energy energy or lose energy lose energy energy so that's why delta omega plus minus omega j which is the phonon energy. Now interestingly here the neutron when it loses energy then it excites one phonon and when neutron gains energy then one phonon de excites and gives the energy to the neutron. So that means there are two ways but here because of the Boltzmann factor which is e to the power minus e by kt at any temperature the lower levels are lower energy levels are more populated than the higher energy levels so that means the population in lower levels is much higher compared to an upper energy level and that means the neutron which is interacting with it has a chance of exciting from lower to higher level and lose energy. That means neutron gives the energy and 
that energy is utilized in exciting a phonon. That means the loss of neutron energy is more probable. <coughs> so, this gives a momentum conservation law and the energy conservation law together with a structure factor, one phonon structure factor, one phonon structure factor weighed by the number of phonons. If we know that if there is a gain in the number of phonons, then it is a plus. So, n plus 1, you know, n plus 1 h omega by 2 is the number of h cross omega, n plus 1 h cross omega is the number of phonons of normal mode with temporal frequency omega j and when it loses it is n so it is minus of it goes to 0 n h cross omega. <coughs> so in this summation this takes care of the loss and gain of the energy together with a structure factor. Now let me explain to you the structure factor in case of phonon measurement. I have written it down here. Please note that apart from this part in red, this is exactly the same as structure factor that we derive for a finite temperature diffraction. Let me just recall the expression. I wrote structure factor Bj This was the structure factor <coughs> we evaluated for 0 degree Kelvin structure that means there was no temperature for a system of crystals in a lattice. And for a finite temperature we argue that this atom position they start getting because of the vibration of around the mean position they become larger and then we get a d by Waller factor which is dependent on q actually the d by Waller factor was q to the over minus q square then average value of u square by 3 i evaluated now let us look at the expression here it is just apart from this phonon displacement term q dot xi, xi is the eigenvector for the qj, for the jth phonon with wave vector q and this is the kth atom. Its mass is root over mk. So, displacement vector for the kth atom for the phonon vector qj, it must be little confusing let me say. So, that means what I mean is this, there are phonons. there are phonons. So, this is the Q value possibly for the jth phonon for this phonon the displacement vector is Q I wrote it as Qj and this phonon has a displacement pattern for all the atoms. So, this is the Qj for the kth atom in the unit cell that gives me <coughs> the xi, the displacement vector for the jth atom, for the jth phonon, jth phonon and that corresponding to that the displacement for the kth atom. So, this is what the phonon displacement vector and then this term exactly what you had for the 0 degree Kelvin structure factor and this is the de Waller factor as I discussed to you earlier. So now this is the one phonon structure factor this is also one phonon because there is also possibility though small probability you can have two phonons getting excited by a neutron or three phonons or multi phonon but we will restrict ourselves to one phonon excitation that means which is the largest probability that the phonon can excite 
uh, I mean sorry the neutron can excite a phonon now let us consider the case of a longitudinal phonon longitudinal phonon means the wave vector transfer Q this Q is not the phonon wave vector please remember this is the momentum transfer in a, in a dif diffraction experiment or in a phonon scattering experiment Q is equal to 4 pi by lambda sin theta this Q is the phonon wave vector which is here these two I will show you how they are related so now Q and xi are parallel when they are parallel then Q dot xi it is a longitudinal phonon because the displacement vector and the momentum vector the propagation direction they are parallel then this is a longitudinal phonon but in that case q dot xi is a constant some constant and then this expression apart from some constants apart is exactly same as the Bragg structure factor so that means wherever I have got a large value of the Bragg peak for the longitudinal phonon I should also have a good coherent dynamical scattering or scattering from the phonon so now I have written down two conservation laws one is that energies delta omega plus minus omega j and the other one is delta of q plus q their vectors minus reciprocal lattice vector and I said that here the momentum conservation demands that g is equal to q plus q now let me look at the reciprocal lattice reciprocal this is the reciprocal lattice please note reciprocal lattice this is the reciprocal lattice now here I need not restrict myself to first Brillouin zone the phonon wave vector needs to be restricted by first Brillouin zone but my G can go over several Brillouin zones and that's why I showed the G here it is 1, 2, 3 apart but this G in general should be equal to Q plus Q so this is a vectorial representation this is the momentum transfer 4 pi by lambda sin theta and this is the Q vector for the phonon within the first Brillouin zone so G and Q Q can be much much larger than the Q which is less than pi by a in its length so now let me just show you two cases one is that longitudinal wave vector then G and Q are parallel so Q also can be parallel and these are longitudinal phonon and this is how the vector looks like Q plus Q is equal to G if it is a transverse phonon then this phonon wave vector Q is perpendicular to the G vector or the reciprocal lattice vector and then I show you the vector diagram again Q plus Q equal to G but now the Q and G they are perpendicular to each other so that means for our experiments if I am using a single crystal the orientation of the sample and the values of Q and G has to be chosen in a manner when I am either I am measuring a longitudinal phonon or an optical phonon we have to choose the G and Q accordingly for a single crystal sample <coughs> so I will just uh, stop here and get into experiments later but this is the triple axis spectrometer at Dhruva I will try to give you example from some other sources but the, typically the triple axis spectrometer is like this this is the huge monochromatic drum at the center of which there is a monochromatic this I have shown you earlier also and you have seen that uh, the monochromatic drum contains a monochromatic at the center of it here is the sample here is the sample so this is the second axis this is the first axis is the second axis and then around the sample you have got an analyzer which rotates along with the detector in a theta to theta mode so these are the three axis so this is how the 
diagram looks like. So now you can see that in the triple axis spectrometer, we have first axis a monochromator, second axis a sample because you need to orient the sample, and the third axis is the analyzer for energy analysis of the scattered beam. Earlier we didn't have this because we were doing diffraction, we were integrating SQ omega over omega and we only had a detector for diffraction work. Now we cannot do this, we have to do the energy analysis. So now we have to have conservation of energy, we have to have conservation of the momentum in this experiment. So scans are performed in a certain path in the Q, E or Q omega space space is the energy transfer space. So either if this is the phonon dispersion relations, either I can do a scan with a constant Q or I can do a scan on constant omega in the space. So now mostly EI and EF may be kept fixed and we can keep varying the Q by going to different angles or we can manipulate in a way where Q is kept fixed and we go to different final energies. Usually incident energy is kept fixed and the final energy can be varied by changing the analyzer angle. So both the scans are possible which I will discuss on the next day. But this is the basic arrangement of the triple axis spectrometer. This is the most used spectrometer for phonons. But there are other spectrometers which I will come to like filter detector spectrometer and quasi elastic neutron scattering spectrometer where we look for stochastic motion or molecular vibrations. But triple axis spectrometer is generally most favored for phonon measurements. With this, I stop today.